victim has now died as a result of the fatal Astro World Festival. According to family, nine-year-old Ezra Blount passed away today after being on life support. Ezra's father says he was on his shoulders when he lost consciousness, causing Ezra to fall to the ground. At some point, concert goers trampled the nine-year-old. Ezra major, Ezra's major organs had damage and his brain was swollen. Eight victims were pronounced dead the night of the concert, while Ezra and another victim, Barty Shahani, Houston's Mayor Sylvester Turner tweeted out uh, this tonight about the passing, writing in quote, Our city tonight prays for his mom, dad, grandparents, other family members, and classmates at this time, end quote. Also happening in Houston this weekend, friends and family got to say their goodbyes to another Astro World victim, 16-year-old Brianna Rodriguez. More than 250 people gathering yesterday in Houston for Rodriguez's funeral. Her white casket was surrounded by flowers and balloons of her favorite colors, pink and white. A funeral for another Houston teen who died at the concert is planned for this Wednesday. New on the night beat a fatal car crash on the south side. A woman was hit by a car. Police responding to the scene around 7 o'clock on South Flores in Sussex. That's where we find the night team's John Paul Barajas. John Paul, what do you know so far about all this? Well, Tim, there's not a lot of information, not a lot of details. The investigation is still ongoing, but police told me a woman, a Hispanic woman in her 30s to 40s, was walking across the street here at South Florida. She got to that last lane where she then got hit by a car going southbound. They believe that the car hit her and it sent her about 30 feet. That car did not stop and is not being looked for by police. They don't have a make or a model, but they do know it's a small black car. And while we were out here, there was people looking at the scene, taking it all in. They said as tragic as this accident or this hit and run is, it's not the first time this intersection has been a problem for these types of events. It is very common for a lot of accidents happening at that intersection. You hear the, the loud boom, and I go, oh crap, I said, I pretty much no, yeah, it's at that intersection. And the scene cleared about 15 or 20 minutes ago, so cars are now allowed to drive through South Florida's. And again, police are looking for a small black vehicle. If you want anything about this hit and run, you're asked to call police, or perhaps if you see a small black vehicle with some front end damage, again, call police. John Paul Barajas, KSAP 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. New on the night beat, we are speaking with the family of a man described as a beloved neighbor and brother. Edward Martinez died in a house fire last night over on the south side. The night team's Lee Waldman is live outside that home tonight. Lee, that home a total loss. It is all that is left of this home. Our charred remains, but I do want to point out these flowers. They're the only things untouched by the fire. One of those bouquets was actually left by a neighbor from across the street who tells us the man who lived inside of this home, he was incredibly loved. Broken windows, blackened belongings, a scorched roof. That's all that's left of the home owned by Edward Martinez. The only thing not destroyed, a bouquet of flowers left by a neighbor who cared deeply for the 63-year-old man. They cared for him and they were all looking out for each other. Ven Martinez identifying his brother as the man who died in the fire last night. Ven came to see the damage for himself. I grew up here uh, in the early mid 80s as a teen and uh, my brother uh, moved in later, you know, after we moved out, uh, he kept the house and he's been here for about 30 years. San Antonio Fire Department tells us the home on Flanders Avenue went up in flames last night around 1015. Once they got the fire under control, that's when they went inside and found Edward dead in one of the bedrooms. A neighbor who didn't want to go on camera says he tried to get inside before fire crews got there to save Edward, but he was too late. He'd give his shirt off uh, his back for you. A uh, type of person that if you needed help, you'd be there. You cut neighbors' lawns and just help out people. Ben tells us their family called Edward Eddie, that he recently retired from a long career in construction, and that he had a passion for fishing, something he shared with Ben when they were young. You know, I just felt bad because he just, he had more life for, in him, you know, he had more to give. Tonight, the cause of the fire is unknown. San Antonio Fire Department is still investigating. Live from the south side, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee.
A man falls unconscious and dies of his stab wounds in front of police on the northwest side. And now investigators are trying to figure out who's to blame. Around 2.30 a.m., police responded to Cincinnati Avenue near North Zarsamora Street and I-10. A man was found lying on his back with multiple stab wounds. Eventually, he was pronounced dead at the scene. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to identify him. Police have not released any details about the suspect. A driver, meanwhile, in serious condition tonight after he was hit by another car near downtown. And now police are looking for that other driver who was involved. This crash happened just after midnight on I-37, not far from Brooklyn Avenue and Broadway. San Antonio police say a Ford F-150 hit a red Tacoma on the rear driver's side. The Tacoma lost control, eventually stopping after running into a fence and electrical tower. The driver taken to Bamsey. If found, the driver of that Ford F-150 could be charged with failure to stop and render aid. Take a look at your screen right now. The Bear County Sheriff's Office needs your help tonight finding 16-year-old Samantha Herschel Anduton. She was last seen on November 7th in the 6,000 block of Roft Road in far west Bear County. BCSO deputies say anyone who was found to be harboring her could be facing charges. If you have any information about where she is, Call BCSO Missing Persons, their number on your screen, 210-335-6000. New tonight, the power struggle in Leon Valley continues. We're learning that the Leon Valley city manager submitting his letter of resignation just eight months after taking the job. Gilbert Perales, who was just hired for the position back in April, says he's quitting because, quote, not everyone is committed to the same vision. In the letter submitted last Tuesday to Mayor Chris Riley, he went on to say that there was a, quote, barrage of disrespectful comments towards staff and constant cyberbullying. Perales' resignation will go into effect on January 15th, 2020. The supply chain crisis is not only affecting businesses and consumers, it's also hitting nonprofits hard. I talked to a local nonprofit founder about why they've had to move up their donation deadline for their event next year. We want to be able to serve as many youth as we have before. That's a tough goal this year for Bernie native Hunter Beaton, the founder of Day One Bags, offering free duffel bags to foster youth. For his annual Adopt-A-Senior program, they give those bags full of gifts to graduating foster teens. This is honestly some of the only gifts that they get upon graduation besides their diploma. But with the pandemic and labor issues holding up supplies all over the world, packing the 610 bags they plan to gift may be tough. Starting out at the beginning of this year, everything's just gotten really jammed up. Jimmy Chittam is the CEO of Flying Circle, a soft luggage company that's donated over 10,000 bags to Beaton's charity over the past few years. Our big customer is the Army and the Air Force. Which means he has to have quality materials, some of which come from overseas. The lack of transport boats between here and overseas, it's been very hectic. An amazing amount of planning still isn't enough to get stuff where it needs to be at the right time. It's easy to see in the warehouse what effect this has had. These shelves are typically stacked up with boxes. Sometimes they're even spilling out here into the aisles. But as you can see, there's a lot of empty space in here. The same issues are arising with the rest of the items Beaton puts inside the bags. The vital documents bag, that also is a supplement to uh, where they can carry all their important documents, such as birth certificates, uh, social security card, things like that. We have a toiletry bag that uh, goes in the bag as well. Uh, we also have a bath towel set, which is new to this year. That's why Beaton has moved up the normal February deadline for monetary donations to November 30th. And so we want to order them and give them plenty amount of time. If enough money comes in and he can pre-order items, there's a chance he'll be able to continue making graduation dreams come true for foster youth across the state. And you still have a couple weeks, so if you want to donate, you can head to Hunter's website, dayonebags.org. Good way to help out the youth. A Southwest Airlines employee is in the hospital tonight after being assaulted on a plane in Dallas. The incident happened Saturday afternoon during the flight that was boarding at Dallas Love Field headed towards LaGuardia Airport in New York. Reports show a passenger went to the back of the plane to allegedly argue with a flight attendant. The passenger told to leave, but instead got into a verbal fight with another employee before allegedly punching them in the head. The passenger was arrested and now faces an aggravated assault charge. The FAA has reported more than 5,000 unruly passengers since just November 9th of this year. Children in a Houston hospital got to meet the First Lady today. It was all part of a national tour to encourage parents to get their children vaccinated. A recent poll found that fewer than one in three parents are willing to have their children vaccinated immediately. Dr. Jill Biden was joined by the U.S. Surgeon General. The First Lady visited Houston back in June. 
during an effort to encourage more adults to get the vaccine. Thanksgiving is 11 days away and preparations are already underway for the annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner. As part of our leading essay segment, we spoke with Patricia Jimenez, the daughter of late Raul. Last year, the meals were delivered with the help of Meals on Wheels and Patricia says they're doing it again, but with a bigger goal. Take a look. To 2019, we fed 25,000, not just seniors, but needy families, uh, the homeless veterans. And as you can imagine, um, the more people that we can help, the better. This year we're making adjustments and we're doing what we can to help, but we think that 12,500 meals delivered to people's homes is, is also very impactful. There's a great need out there. To watch the full interview, to sign up or get to get a meal or to sign up as a volunteer, head to ksat.com. Just click on the leading essay tab. A couple hundred people dealing with some water issues tonight. Around 700 homes and businesses on the far north side are under a water boil order tonight. Saw is making that announcement earlier today. Terra Mount and Stonewall Estates are both affected. People in that area should boil their water for drinking, cooking, Ice making until further notice. That order is due to SAWS officials noticing a drop in the water pressure, which went below 20 PSI. For a map of the affected areas, just head over to KSAT.com. Not as chilly out there tonight, but still definitely cool. It's 65 degrees outside as we look out at downtown San Antonio. Clear skies. But as we're ending the weekend, another work week is going to start. And if you're taking your kids to school tomorrow, here's what you can expect for the school day forecast. Early tomorrow, we'll be waking up right near 57 degrees and uh, we'll have some areas of fog with mostly sunny skies and a high temperature near 80 degrees. It'll be warm with south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour by the time you pick the kiddos up. Coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about the noticeable increase in humidity in the form of morning fog and a warm up early this week. Temperatures will be well above average by nearly 10 degrees. But where's the rain and when can we expect our next cold front? That forecast in a few. Tim, Courtney. Everyone is keeping a close eye on Queen Elizabeth after recent health issues have held her back. Why she missed out on a World War II remembrance event. Plus, closing arguments are happening tomorrow in the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. How soon a verdict is expected in this high profile case. And that $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill could be signed by the president as soon as tomorrow. This is the House is still deciding on the Build Back Better plan. The latest on all of that from Capitol Hill right after this. The $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill will soon become law. President Biden expected to hold a signing ceremony tomorrow. Later in the week, he'll travel to New Hampshire and Detroit to tout the new law. But as ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports, the president is still seeing some dismal poll numbers. President Joe Biden is set to sign the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill into law on Monday. He will be joined by members of Congress who helped write the historic bill and a diverse group of leaders who fought for its passage, governors and mayors of both parties and labor and business leaders. The White House announcing Sunday night that former New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu will oversee the implementation of the bill. 19 Senate Republicans and 13 in the House back the infrastructure bill, but no Republicans support Biden's separate larger social spending and climate change bill. Every Republican is united in our efforts to try to drive a stake through the heart of this uh, effort, which the Democrats are pushing because they are so addicted to taxing and spending. According to a new ABC News Washington Post poll, 58 percent of Americans support the one point seven five trillion dollar plan. But the poll also finds President Biden's overall job performance approval at a new low, 41 percent. And 70 percent of Americans say the economy is in bad shape. More than half, 55 percent, disapprove of Biden's handling of the economy. The White House acknowledged inflation is high and said the social spending plan will help Americans if passed. It will cut the cost of child care by more than half for most working families. It will build new housing all around the country to let people find new opportunities to, to find jobs and live in an affordable way. Democratic leaders are committed to revisiting the bill before the Thanksgiving break, but several moderates have said they are waiting for confirmation from the Congressional Budget Office that the bill, as written, is paid for. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 
Okay, if you've been shopping at Trader Joe's lately, you might want to check your freezer for some chicken burgers if you bought some. The grocery chain is recalling the chili lime chicken burgers and the spinach feta chicken sliders after pieces of bone were found in the meat. They were all sold between August 16th to September 29th. If you have those products in your freezer, the FDA asks that you throw them away or return them to Trader Joe's. No word on a refund for those yet. So no. <laughs> don't know what happens if they get them. Maybe they just throw them away too. <laughs> I don't even know. Well, I didn't yeah. buy the chicken burger. Yeah, I didn't either. I am buying into this weather. Oh yeah. yeah. It is incredible. We've deserved this, I yeah. feel like, and I'm hoping it lasts longer than not because this is the type of weather that we wait for all year round. Be nice though to have a little bit of rain just to yeah. get some things wet out there. Yeah, it would be, Tim. And you know, honestly, this weekend's weather was perfect for any kind of outdoor activities and it felt a lot like fall, chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. Here's how today stacked up. We reached 79 degrees this afternoon. That's seven degrees above the average of 72 and it even got up to 85 in Pleasanton and 86 in Del Rio, close to 90 in Catula. But all in all, hard to find a way to complain about this weekend's weather. Now, as we turn a leaf and head into uh, the work week, we are going to see an increase in the humidity. And you can probably notice outside that it doesn't feel as chilly as last night. And the reason for that, of course, is because of the higher humidity. Dew points are in the upper 50s. It's 66 Six degrees outside and winds are from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. This is a look at the humidity last night. Dew points in the 30s. That's chapstick weather. But watch what happened in the last 24 hours. We've seen the humidity on the rise. Dew points have risen by 20 degrees in just 24 hours here. And even though you may not uh, notice the humidity too much outside right now, you'll see it tomorrow in the morning in the form of Fog. As you can see on the high res future cast, when the sun rises at about 658 tomorrow morning, there will be areas of fog out there. So if you have an early morning commute, just be aware that your early morning commute may be interrupted a little bit by some fog. You may have to turn on those low beams uh, to get through that fog. 57 degrees early tomorrow morning and then throughout the morning skies are going to uh, clear and we'll be looking at sunny skies in the afternoon and a high temperature near 80 degrees. So it's going to be a warm one and the sun will set tomorrow at 538 PM. Now on the future cast, you can see that high pressure system off to our east continuing to bring in the Gulf of Mexico moisture. In fact, it'll be breezy Tuesday and Wednesday as that moisture is fueled in from the Gulf of Mexico itself. But here's the thing before it can get too humid, another cold front is going to arrive and this one will arrive Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be bringing us that rain that we really could use by this point uh, here in South Central Texas. Most of the rain from this front will be up in Arkansas and in uh, Tennessee, close to that Mississippi River Valley. Our rain chance in San Antonio Wednesday night into Thursday is going to be isolated at best, about a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm as that front moves through. But then behind that front on Thursday, skies may struggle to clear and it could be fairly cloudy on Thursday with a high temperature in the upper 60s. So it's going to be warm to start this week. High temperatures well above average. Again, the average high this time of year is 72, so about 10 degrees above average Tuesday and Wednesday. And then that front will move through. Uh, temperatures will be falling into the 60s for the highs on Thursday and struggling to get out of the 60s on Friday itself. By this time next week, uh, the uh, weekend will be really nice and fairly mild outside. So again, just to summarize tomorrow, waking up at 57 degrees, some areas of fog. We'll be seeing those skies clear by noon. We'll be in the low 70s and topping off at 4 p.m. at 80 degrees. South winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Those winds will be more breezy Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, we'll have more morning fog and clouds on Tuesday and Wednesday as well, uh, and only a slim chance for an isolated shower or storm early uh, Thursday. Thursday morning as that front moves through. Tim Courtney. That looks so good. I'm so happy about this week. Does look pretty good. <laughs> All right, Greg Simmons will be along with a preview of Instant Replay right after this. All right, the Dallas Cowboys redeeming themselves after playing the worst game of the season last week by playing their best game of the season today. With more on that and what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's check in with our Greg. Where Simmons. was that team last week? I mean, that was incredible today. And if they play like that the rest of the season, 
I won't say it right now. <laughs> and the UGSA Roadrunners remain undefeated in their unprecedented scene, but not before they got a scare in the dome this weekend. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Well, it's coming. Picked up. Prescott unloading. Enzo caught by Lamb. Touchdown. Look at that. The Dallas Cowboys beat the Atlanta Falcons in all three phases of the game. Offense, defense, and special teams today. It could not have gone better. Dak Prescott threw for two touchdowns, ran for another. Zeke had two of his own. So did C.D. Lamb. The Dallas team produced three interceptions, including another for Trayvon Diggs and Micah Parsons. Got another sack. Even special teams scored a touchdown off a blocked punt. Our Larry Ramirez is there, and he'll take you inside the Cowboys winning locker room. The UTSA Roadrunners are now 10-0 after getting an unexpected challenge from Southern Miss that didn't, wasn't decided until the fourth quarter at home in the Dome on Saturday. Where are they in the latest college football rankings? We will let you know. Wow, not one, but two major upsets in the first week of the high school football playoffs. Who's in, who's out, the best of big game coverage, and all new 12's top 12 and sub 5A rankings tonight with new entries as we get you ready for the second week of the postseason. And SAFC's playoff push makes history. All that plus, who do you blame more for the Texas Longhorns' terrible season, including their first five-game losing streak in 65 years tonight? You decide. Instant replay is live and is right after the night beats. The Jayhawks. Who would have thought? Jayhawk. Who would have thought? Courtney's still on the corner. Yes, yeah, she is. She's not coming out. <laughs> I'm not coming out. We up. might see her on the other side of this break. We'll be back right after this. Authorities in Kenosha, Wisconsin are gearing up as the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse draws to a close. Yeah, closing arguments expected tomorrow with jury deliberations beginning soon after that. ABC's Rena Roy explains what kind of help is being brought in for that preparation. About 500 of Wisconsin National Guard troops have been activated as the city of Kenosha prepares for a possible verdict in the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse. We're optimistic. We think that things will be under control and that'll be kind of a peaceful resolution that whatever the verdict is, that people are going to, you know, have a little more calmness to them this time. After nearly two weeks of testimony, closing arguments are set to begin on Monday. Both sides will have one last chance to sway the jury in their favor. Rittenhouse is facing multiple charges, including homicide. But on Friday, prosecutors asked if the jury could receive instructions on lesser charges, something the judge indicated he will likely do. If I allow those, then the jury, if they are unable to agree that you're guilty of the charge defense, will have the opportunity to consider whether you're guilty of the less serious offense. Rittenhouse is accused of shooting and killing Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber and injuring Gage Grosskreutz with an AR-15 during August 2020 protests in Kenosha after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. This drone video, a key piece of evidence. Prosecutors arguing it shows Rittenhouse provoked Rosenbaum by raising his gun and that he had intent to kill. But the 18-year-old claims he was acting in self-defense, breaking down on the stand. <laughs> the defendants have to argue successfully to this jury that Kyle Rittenhouse had a reasonable belief that he was in fear of his life. Did Kyle Rittenhouse intentionally go to murder anyone on that day? What was his intent? The jury will get instructions tomorrow morning before hearing closing arguments. They could start deliberating by late afternoon. Rena Roy, ABC News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Five inmates, including two accused murderers, are still on the run in Georgia after breaking out of jail there. Authorities in Pulaski County say the men escaped late Friday, Friday night and stole a white Kia Sedona van in the parking lot. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations confirms all five inmates have a history of violent crimes and are armed with at least two tasers. Authorities are warning anyone who sees them not to approach them, but to call 911. Be careful what you click on in your email inbox. The FBI is addressing reports about unauthorized emails coming from a legitimate FBI email address being sent to thousands of organizations about a purported cyber threat. At least 100,000 of those emails have already hit inboxes. The agency says it is aware of the fake emails. One of those claimed to be a warning from the Department of Homeland Security that the recipient was the target of a, quote, sophisticated attack. But the actual DHS Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency has made no such warning.
Queen Elizabeth canceling what was expected to be her first public appearance in weeks. Today, Buckingham Palace releasing a short statement announcing that after spraining her back, the Queen will not be attending the Remembrance Sunday service. ABC's Lama Hassan has more with, from London. This morning, notably absent from leading the nation in honouring the war dead is the Queen. Buckingham Palace releasing a short statement announcing the Queen, having sprained her back, has decided this morning with great regret that she will not be able to attend today's Remembrance Sunday service at the Cenotaph. Her Majesty is disappointed that she will miss the service. It is one of the most important events in the Queen's diary. Living through World War II as a teenager, she is head of the armed forces. It was the Queen's firm intention to be present for the Remembrance Sunday service. It was an event event she did not want to miss. She takes her role as a figurehead for the nation in these moments of remembrance very seriously, so no one regrets not being there more than she does. It was only three weeks ago since the 95-year-old monarch was advised by her doctors to rest and spending the night at the hospital last month for what the palace says were preliminary inquiries. The Queen carrying out light duties via Zoom, sitting at her desk smiling broadly, carrying out virtual meetings with ambassadors, and as the palace says, remain Meaning to be in good spirits. People will be concerned, I think, because we haven't seen her carry out an in-person engagement for some time. Now we have this, which the palace is saying is unrelated, but of course she has been unable to do her duties as we've been so used to seeing her do for so many years. Lama Sources say the Queen's back sprain is unrelated to her doctor's recent advice to rest. A spokesperson says she hopes to continue as planned with her schedule of light official duties next week. Heading back here to the States, people in Long Island, New York, are dealing with some fallen trees and damage after a powerful storm last night. The National Weather Service is confirming two tornadoes touched down in the area. Both were EF zeros, but several trees and power lines were downed as a result, and some small planes were even turned over at a nearby airport. However, no injuries were reported. Nearly every Tuesday night, the KSAT Explains team releases an episode focused on exploring the ins and outs of one topic affecting San Antonio. And the past few months have been very busy, so if you haven't had a chance to check them out, here is a look at what you can expect from the latest season of KSAT Explains. The community at large wants to do something about the foster system. They care about it, but it is so complex that they don't understand it in its entirety. The issue of homelessness is far from a new problem, but homeless encampments are getting new attention as the arguments over what to do about them have gotten louder. Those firefighters, they were trying to evacuate every single person. And we've learned a lot in 20 years working with the Afghans. A taco will feed the soul of every human being. San Antonio is the culinary and cultural capital of Texas. It's challenging for Texans to stop relying on their cars, especially in a state that focuses on building bigger and better highways. I hear more people saying that we need to invest in public housing. A property like the Alasan Apache is like a safety net. I'm proud as a San Antonio that we have Texas Biomed here that does such uh, groundbreaking research that's impacting lives all over the world. It is extremely important. This is somebody's life on the line. All of those episodes you just saw previews for are available to watch right now on demand. Just head to ksat.com slash explains. Well, it was a beautiful day out there today. We got up to 79 degrees. Temperatures outside right now, not as chilly as uh, last night. And we have a little rise in humidity to thank for that. We'll be seeing some fog early tomorrow. Outside right now, temperatures are in the mid 60s around San Antonio, but the upper 50s out in Hondo, 54 degrees. In Kerrville, 66 in Del Rio. If you're taking the pup on a walk tomorrow, here's Fido's forecast. We'll be waking up with temperatures in the 50s with some areas of fog, topping off near 80 degrees, so a bit warm. We'll talk about our next cold front in the forecast coming up in a few. Thank you, Sarah. Nobody likes getting the hiccups, which is why a doctor created a new way to get rid of them. We'll tell you about the prototype that was created right here in San Antonio. 
And a team of super-powered aliens versus a big red dog? No, it's not a bizarre new movie, although I might watch that. <laughs> it's actually the showdown at the weekend box office. See who came out as the victor. My money's on the big red dog. Me too. Hiccups. There are all kinds of home remedies. Suck on a lemon, drink from the far side of the glass, a spoonful of sugar. Well, a local doctor has a new solution. Just wait for them to pass. <laughs> As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us, it's a weirdly shaped straw inspired in part by McDonald's ice cream. Do you have hiccups right now? <laughs> Hiccups are nothing to giggle at for twins Avery and Paige. These little kids were getting hiccups every day, every single day, and often it would become painful, annoying. Their mom, Pat Squire, says they tried all the home remedies. Also cold water with the straw, with closing the ears. We did that. Nothing worked well. So when she heard about this, the Hickaway, she was intrigued. So uh, I started with this. It's the invention of Dr. Ali Safi, a neurointensivist. It all began when he saw a patient suffering. He said, doctor, you know, I'm very okay with my brain surgery, but what hurts me now is this hiccup. <laughs> he turned to me and said, doctor, can you help me please? Hiccups begin with a diaphragm spasm. The nerves alert the brain to close the throat. That's the when you hear the hic sound in our, our throat. So Safi focused on how to interrupt the cycle. How can I come with a device that keep the diaphragm and the valve in the throat busy at the same time. These are from years of trial and error. While working on his prototypes, he was inspired by his son's McFlurry. Take a look at this straw. Now this will not cure the hiccups, but the engineering design, well, it was an inspiration. He came up with this, a fat straw with a tiny precise hole. So you have to suck five times harder than normal. You need to, yes, yeah, sip through it like, Right. The pressure lowers the diaphragm and interrupts the hiccup cycle. Sort of faking out the brain. Yeah. It's backed by science. A published study found it worked nine out of ten times. As for Avery and Paige, well, watch. Are your hiccups gone? Problem solved without a hiccup. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Running out of ways to say it's such nice weather. <laughs> <laughs> So am I, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I know, she probably Katie, Katie was more. complaining yesterday. It's like, I really like this weather, but I'm getting really bored. Yeah, it, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. It's boringly complicated, yes. too, because we do have subtle changes in the forecast. You just don't see them too, yeah. too easily. One of those being uh, the, the humidity is increasing, right. and we can see, however, that the red oaks are starting to change, and it's yeah. looking a little bit more like fall. Our, yeah, yeah, you'll be cleaning those leaves out of the pool for sure. Uh, don't even don't even remind me that uh, post soak season isn't until uh, the, the <laughs> spring months, and that's a yeah. lot of cleaning up too. As soon but as yeah. those are done, the other ones start falling right after. Exactly, exactly. That's the way it works. Well, this picture is sent in uh, by our very own Justin Horn on our KSAT uh, Connect section there on the weather app. You can see again the trees are starting to look a little bit more fall-like out there. Outside right now. Uh, nice and clear out there. We got up to 79 degrees this afternoon at seven degrees above the average high temperature and this morning low was chilly. It was 47 tomorrow morning. Mornings will be about 10 degrees warmer than what we saw this morning. And again, the reason for that is the subtle increase in humidity boringly complicated, right? We have seen an increase in the humidity because of that Gulf moisture increasing. You won't really f notice it too much until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we'll see areas of fog outside uh, to start your morning commute. But the dew point has gone up. You can see here it's gone up by about 24 degrees just within the last 24 hours or so. Here's the future cast. You can see that that uh, fog will start to develop right close to dawn at 7 a.m. So if you have an early morning commute, you could be seeing some of that fog there on the roads, especially in the valleys and hills around the metro area and south and east of San Antonio. But then that fog will dissipate and we'll have a sunny day in the afternoon. We'll be looking at high temperature 
right near 80 degrees in San Antonio. It'll be in the upper 80s though out toward Del Rio. 85 increase of springs for the high 87 in Gatula. 79 though cooler in the higher elevations in Kerrville. 81 for the high in New Braunfels and 82 in Gonzales. Here in San Antonio we'll wake up as I just mentioned at 57 degrees. Sun is going to rise close to 7 a.m. We'll have some patchy fog at that time around lunch 74. So if you uh, want to take your lunch outside, that'll be great tomorrow in the afternoon hours. We'll be warming up to 80. It'll be warm and sunny. The sun will set at 538 and a lot like tonight. We're not going to see necessarily a chilly evening. It'll be fairly mild with temperatures falling into the 60s by 10 p.m. South winds tomorrow at 5 to 15 miles per hour on the radar and satellite across the nation. Fairly quiet for most. However, there are uh, there is the first snow of the season across parts of the Great Lakes and into New York. That's some lake effect snow there behind it. A fairly strong cold front, but it's stalled out in North Texas and this high pressure system to our east is going to prevent us from seeing that cold push of air. Instead, what we'll see is increasing humidity uh, both uh, tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. Dew points will be right near 60 degrees. That's where you start to feel it. You can feel the mugginess out there and we'll be dealing with morning fog Tuesday when and Wednesday morning as well. Uh, but then a front will arrive Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That'll clear out the humidity and make it feel great on Thursday. And on Thursday, temperatures will actually struggle to get out of the 60s. As far as rain goes, not a great rain chance with this cold front. Like, like the last cold front, we'll only see a few isolated showers and storms with the arrival of that front Wednesday night into Thursday. But by the weekend, it's going to be really nice too. Temperatures will be in the 70s. So if the weather's going to be boring, at least it's going to be beautifully boring. Right? Let, let's not complain. I feel like it's going to be getting freezing and then we'll be like, hey, remember when we complained oh about that? A beautiful, boring weather. Yep. And if you want to hang your way. Christmas decorations outside, great weather for that too. Yeah. Yeah, well. He won't do it until after the turkeys are gone. Bird's got to have its day first before the fat <laughs> man gets to do his thing. We'll be right back. In my opinion, you had your chance for Venom, Let There Be Carnage topped the 200 million mark in domestic box office, falling to fifth place with $4 million. 4.6 million put No Time to Die in fourth place. It's made 150 million domestic. Dune dropped a spot to number three. The sci fi epic made $5.5 million. Clifford the Big Red Dog opened in second place with a decent sized weekend worth $16.4 million. Since debuting Wednesday, the family film's total is $22 million. Eternals faltered in its second weekend out, but kept its title. $27.5 million gave the Marvel movie a 10 day domestic total of $119 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I still think Clifford could beat the aliens. The fight in Texas Aggies suffered a major setback and dropped in the polls after being beaten by Ole Miss on the road this weekend. Don't make me read this. <laughs> the Texas Longhorns are in turmoil after their upset loss at home to Kansas, producing their first five-game losing streak since Greg Simmons was born. The Jayhawks! <laughs> that was a long time ago, Greg Simmons. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> I got to dig at somebody. Uh, unfortunately for me, me. <laughs> yes, it was. And our San Antonio Spurs tip off a three-game West Coast road trip in the city of Lo the Stars, Los Angeles. How did they do against the Lake Show? Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Daniels flushed. Daniels end zone caught. Kansas wins it. The wheels have come off the Texas Longhorns football team after the Kansas Jayhawks scored their first conference road win since 2008, and they did it by scoring a two-point conversion in overtime in Austin. What does UT do now? The fight in Texas. With the steal. And takes out a little of those free throw frustration with the dunk. Our San Antonio Spurs got their three-game road trip started today in Lakerland. How did that turn out with the silver and black? We got all the highlights, plus San Antonio FC has advanced to the Western Conference Finals in the USL playoffs after a big win in front of a sellout crowd at Toyota Field. Our Andrew Seeley tonight with all the details. All that plus, our Larry Ramirez is live from Dallas after the Cowboys' biggest win of the season. Instant Replay is live, and it is next. We'll look forward to it. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. You're welcome. Someone's team is winning. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. We'll be right back. That's so rude.
wrap things up with something good tonight. Ready, set, run. You would never guess it, but this woman is 105 years old and just set a new world record in running. Julia Hurricane Hawkins is smashing records at the Louisiana Senior Games. She is the first female athlete to compete in the 100 meter dash and the 105 and up age division. She finished in one minute and two seconds and she started running when she was 101. Her advice is to stay healthy. Look at her go. Congratulations, Julia. That's all of our time for all of us here at KSAT 12. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune into Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. And all new instant replay starts right now. everyone welcome to a brand new edition of instant replay had it not been for the dallas cowboys and the utsa roadrunners this would have been a miserable weekend for football fans after the losses by texas a m and even more surprising the longhorns overtime loss to kansas who ends a 56 game conference road losing streak dating back to 2008 and ut had its first five game losing streak since 1956 the cowboys have just the remedy on game day Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys coming out their worst loss of the season, following the embarrassing defeat by the Broncos, while the Falcons were coming out their best win of the year against the New Orleans Saints. Maybe it's the wake-up call the Cowboys needed. They got things on track quickly. First quarter, Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb for the 13-yard touchdown. 7-3 Dallas after one second quarter. Zeke catches in from a yard out of the Falcons who stop on fourth and seven. It's 14-3 Cowboys. Next drive, fourth and three. Dak has all the time he needs to deliver to Michael Gallup, picking up 23 yards. Good to have him back. Zeke would score on the next play and it was 21-3 Cowboys. Under two minutes to play, Dak finds ZD Lamb again. Going out of bounds this time for a nine-yard touchdown. The Cowboys are running away with this, leading 28-3. The Falcons punting away near their own end zone. Blocked by Torrance Armstrong. There's a fight for the loose ball. Ends up in the hands of Deshaun Wright for the touchdown of the end zone. They had a two-point conversion. Cowboys lead 36-3 at half. Third quarter, the Dallas defense finishes the Falcons first. Anthony Brown makes this fantastic juggling catch for the interception. Next drive, Trayvon Diggs picks off the Matt Ryan pass. Leads to this. Dak calling his own number on fourth down, scoring from four yards out, and let's go to the final score. Look, he lowered that shoulder to get in there. 43-3, Dallas is now 7-2. and two. More now from our Larry Ramirez in Arlington. The Cowboys bounced back in a big way today, dominating the Falcons. It's exactly what they needed after their wake-up call loss to Denver. Last week just wasn't us, and, and, and everybody in that locker room knows that. And um, it, it left a bad taste in our mouth, and I think it's a taste that we need, as I said, to understand that how tough this game is. But tonight just showed that when we focus in, we take it one play at a time. When our heart and our minds are where our feet are, um, we're capable of doing some great things. We dominated the day, um, played the way we know how to play. Uh, we preach, you know, just stay the course, stay, stay, just handle your business uh, when you're one individual matchup, and that we did today. Our guys needed to bring the hammer today, and and, uh, and we did that, and, uh, and I think it was you know evident you know with the with the lead that we had there at halftime, and was able to finish it off in the second half. Coming up later on the show, Dallas set the tone early on. Plus, the sports guys are here to discuss the Cowboys' impressive dub. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Larry. Let's take a look at some of these stats. The Cowboys' three interceptions are the most in a single game since 2010. The Cowboys' 29 points in the second quarter is the most in any quarter in team history. So up next, a road trip to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs at 3.25 p.m. Last Sunday, the Cardinals won with former Texas quarterback Colt McCoy calling the shots, filling in for the injured Kyler Murray. That would not continue against the Panthers. Cam Newton had two touchdowns in his first quarter in his return to Carolina. Went up 23 to nothing before Arizona got on the board. The Panthers win at 34-10. Saints and Titans, former Aggie quarterback Ryan Tannehill, a touchdown pass in the 30, ran it in for another. Titans hold off the Saints 23-21. Bucks at Washington. Tom Brady was picked off twice in the first quarter. Taylor Heineke added a touchdown pass. Antonio Gibson ran for two more. Washington upsets Tampa Bay 29-19. The Bucks are 2-3 and three on the road this season. Seahawks and Packers with Aaron Rodgers and A.J. Dillon was a difference in this one. He scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and that was enough. Pack win at 17-0. Bills and Jets. A Buffalo rushing attack racked up 139 yards on the ground. Four touchdowns from four different players all in the second half. Josh Allen had a two touchdown passes. Mike White was picked off four times. Bills win at 45-17. Lions and Steelers in overtime tied at 16 after Big Ben was on the COVID list. Steelers looking like they will end it on a field goal, but with 15 15 seconds left. Steelers trying to gain a few more yards and the ball is knocked loose after the catch. Trey Flowers, a veteran from Arkansas, recovers. Detroit doesn't lose. This one ends in a tie. Detroit is now 0-8-1. 
Browns have passed. Mac Jones had three touchdown passes, two of those in the first half. Baker Mayfield left the game in the third quarter with a right knee injury, never returned. Pass went at 45-7. Vikings and Chargers, Kirk Cousins at 294 yards passing, two touchdowns. Dalvin Cook at 94 yards rushing, another touchdown. Vikings went at 27-20. Eagles at Broncos, third quarter. Denver going forward on fourth and one, and the ball is going to get knocked loose. Darius Slay picks up this fumble after a lot of hesitation. Good blocking. He returns at 83 yards to the house. Jalen Hurts threw two touchdown passes, and the Eagles win this 30-13. to Jaguars at Colts. Indy up 3-0 early in the first with the Jags punt is blocked. E.J. Speed recovers the ball at the 12-yard line, returns it in for the touchdown. Colts win 23-17. So here are your local NFL connections here from San Antonio. Andrews and Dejo out of Smithson Valley. Seven tackles, six solo, one tackle for a loss. For the Saints, Markins Davenport out of Stevens. Three solo tackles, two sacks, two tackles for a loss, and two quarterback hits. Broncos, Caden Stearns out of Steele. Three tackles, two solo. The Packers, Ty Summers out of Reagan. One solo tackle. The Seahawks, Alton Robinson out of Judson. Two solo tackles. The Raiders, Trayvon Mayrick out of Smithson Valley. Six tackles, five solo, one pass defense. First leg of a three-game road trip in Los Angeles starting this afternoon. Spurs taking on the Lakers, who are still without LeBron James. San Antonio down by 10, but trying to rally in the fourth quarter. Keldon Johnson hits the three. He makes a career-high six three-pointers in this game. Spurs down 90-82. Then later in the frame, DeJounte Murray finds Doug McDermott for a three in rhythm. San Antonio cuts the lead all the way down to two, 105-103, with a little over two and a half minutes remaining. Murray finished with a triple-double, 22 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, but Los Angeles pulls away late. Carmelo Anthony knocks down the three. He scored 15 points today. Anthony Davis led the way with 34. Here's your final score. Spurs fall 114 to 106. San Antonio's 4-9. Pop is encouraged by his team's play down the stretch. We never gave in. We went down 11 several times. I don't know how many times. Uh, but they keep playing. Uh, they're getting better. And you just got to keep their, uh, their energy up and keep their belief up that that worm will turn as, as long as we continue to execute better and better and uh, keep up the aggressiveness. All right, here's a look at the Spurs schedule this week. They'll still be on the road tomorrow. I should say Tuesday when they take on the Clippers at 930 and they're at Minnesota to wrap it up Thursday at 7 p.m. Time now for the nice instant replay poll question. Who do you blame the most for the Longhorns first five game losing streak in 65 years? Steve Sarkeesian and his coaching staff or the Longhorn football players vote now. We'll have the results of the end of the show tonight. Up next, Larry Ramirez will be live in Arlington for more coverage from the Cowboys big win today. But first, the Roadrunners are still undefeated. You know, just attacking it every, you know, every week and, you know, not letting up on any team. You know, and we, we kind of learned a lesson tonight, and I think this will, will help us. She is making history and are headed to their first ever Western Conference Finals in the USL. Andrew Seeley will here to tell you all about that and how they did it. The Brandeis volleyball team, as well as New Braunfels Canyon, continue their run at a state championship. We got the best of big game coverage as the playoffs begin. New entries in 12's top 12, and the U.S. Tennis Association helps the Roadrunners make our play of the week. An instant replay continues live next.